Welcome to the Soul Seeker Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Kabert, and this year marks the fifth birthday of the Soul Seeker Podcast. I started this pod back in 2019 when I was taking my first steps on the path of remembering. And at the time, the tagline for the show was a journey of self discovery. A year later, it became a journey of remembering. Yet, what I know now is back then I was still seeking. And what I've come to know now is that it's the journey of seeking that brings us the silent, slow stillness of acceptance. And therein lies our own innate wisdom. It's my mission now to eradicate the glorification of hustle culture, as it was my drive in entrepreneurship that led to a greater whole. And that's because I was outsourcing my sovereignty rather than looking within. So let this be your invitation to take a deep breath in and remember that at any time we can shift our thoughts and our feelings to create the outer world in which we wish to live. Soul Seekers, it's time to grow. Let's go. Hey there, and welcome back to the Soul Seeker Podcast. I am your host, Sam Kabert, and this is the sixth and final episode of this special six-part mini-series. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, and you haven't listened to the first five episodes, I would recommend to go back and listen to episode number one with Overcome the Overwhelm for the first step, and listen to these in order, because each of the steps builds off of each other. If you don't listen to this in order and you just listen to this one, it's not going to make any sense at all. So with that, thank you to my co-host, Alicia Kay, for coming on and sharing your wisdom, helping to unpack this step from another perspective. And thank you, Promo Corner, for hosting this show as this is being repurposed from another platform onto this Soul Seeker podcast. Speaking of the Soul Seeker pod, if you're new to the show and you haven't left a rating and review, and you're digging the show, please consider leaving a five-star review as it helps the show grow. You know, I've been doing this pod for about five years now, and it's my mission to raise the collective consciousness from this fallen state of humanity. And if you're down with that mission, an easy and totally free way to give back to the show to do your part of raising the collective consciousness from the fallen state is by simply leaving a rating and review. So thank you for your consideration there. And I hope you get so much value out of this episode of unpacking the sixth step of the six step breath process with Alicia Kay. Welcome to Overcoming Overwhelm, the final episode in this six week mini series that is all about the six step breath process, this framework that I'm giving away and teaching you guys in my new book called Overcome the Overwhelm. If you want to check out the new book, Overcome the Overwhelm, you can go on my website, samkabert.com. And finally, in this final step with my co-host here, Alicia Kay, who is not in the promotional products industry, but I brought her in because she's a good friend of mine and she is a certified trauma therapist. She provides a great perspective of this. We can unpack the final steps and the final step in the six step breath process. With that out of the way, I want to let you guys know as well If you have not listened to the first five or watched the first five episodes, please go back to episode one, not to episode five, go back to episode one, the very beginning, because none of this is going to make sense if you don't go back to the foundational work, because each episode builds on one of each other. So with that, just hit pause, go back to the first one. Otherwise, stay with us here as we unpack the sixth and final step of the six step breath process, which is the H in the acronym breath. And that is habits to integrate. This is like probably my favorite step. Um, You know, so many people have always asked me, especially in the promotional products industry, like, how are you able to do so much? And that's when I wrote my first book called Great Title, Sam. It was called, not that, it was called, uh, Working with virtual assistants. That's my inner crick, my inner voice that I wanted you guys to hear. Great title, Sam. Like working with virtual assistants, that's all you came up with. A couple of years later, I turned that into a podcast called Clone Yourself. Much better title. If I planned that better, I would have called the book Clone Yourself. 
That said, though, how was I able to do so much? Virtual assistants, freelancers, a lot of people are doing a lot of stuff with AI right now. But that what this is all about is taking action. And there's a very simple way I want to relate this step to, and that is the PPAI Expo, right? At the time of this recording, it's March. When you're listening to this, it goes live in April, and it could be, you know, maybe later in the year, but we're still semi coming off of the Expo in January. And there's so many different trade shows and regional shows throughout the year. So this is always relevant. But for many people, when we go to a conference, whether it's seeing an inspiring speaker, going to a breakout session, meeting with some colleagues or whatever the case may be, we're like, oh, wow. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm so stoked. And when I go home, I'm going to do something about this. But that time never comes for most people. The reason why most people don't actually have the success that they yearn so much or the transformation, the change in their habits and behaviors and their feelings and their emotional state is because they are not taking action. So think about this, uh, our industry, like we are literally an industry that is selling swag for a lot of events, right? It's not always events, but a lot of them are events based. We have an obligation to ourselves to not just just like make sure that we're providing good products uh, that are sustainable or whatever is your thing and you believe in these products, but also that we're inspiring change in people's life. And this all has a ripple effect. It's something we talked about in previous episodes. So it starts with us, right? And being accountable and being in integrity, being like, where have I said recently I was going to make a change, but I haven't actually made that change. Let this be an invitation to go back to that drawing board to allow yourself to reset. We're literally in spring now. Like this is a time of rebirth in a lot of ways. This is the new year. We can look at the trees with, you know, brand new leaves on them, the lush green grass in the fields, wildflowers popping up. Like there's life and energy everywhere. This is a great time to get back on track with those new year resolutions and everything else to invoke change. How this relates to the breath system well, in order to unpack that, let's go back to the first step. So we experience an emotion, a trigger, whatever. We don't want to feel it, right? Most of us don't want to feel it, at least. If you're going to practice the breath system with the B, it's breathing to slow down. The R is relaxed to feel. The E is energy to reveal. Getting curious on what's the lesson here. The A is accept to surrender. Those four first four steps is the shadow work. That is the deep work where most of us don't want to feel it. But if you bypass any of those steps, you're, you're just going to get stuck again. When you start to go through these first four steps is when you're going to start to see transformation. But it doesn't stop there. In the sixth or the fifth step, we get into transforming into empowering beliefs. In the last episode, we talked about toxic positivity and the reason why you need to go through the first four steps first and how you can retrain your subconscious mind to actually call forth these feelings and states and goals and intentions that you actually want to feel and achieve. But finally here in the sixth step is habits to integrate. And this is a big one because whatever came up for you in the first five steps, like now it's for you to kind of go back and be like, hmm, what do I have to change? I used an example earlier of feeling stressed with rush orders. Right. So like literally a new habit that I've integrated with rush orders is being like, OK, I'm going to go through the five steps, the six steps. Right. Because the six ones habits, I don't really need to go through that, but I'm going to allow myself to feel it. It can be something as simple as that where you're committing to just going through this or maybe what's coming up for you is like, wow. I'm really disconnected through my breath. And a few of these uh, different episodes, when we did a little bit of breathing, like that actually felt really good. A new habit that you might want to integrate is just being conscious and intentional with your breath when someone else is talking. So for the next few minutes here, just notice as I'm talking or Alicia's talking, if you're breathing or not, and come back to your breath with long, slow inhales and exhales. It's that simple. The habits that you're going to integrate so that you take action are going to be different for each and every one of you. And it's going to be different every time you process an emotion, right? We talked about in 
episode three or four, I think it was episode four, internal family systems and parts work, something Alicia teaches and being with these different thought forms that come up. Maybe a habit to integrate is to look into IFS and parts work a little bit more and to get to know these parts, right? Think about what's come up over the course of these episodes and find somewhere to take action. Now, I'll get off my soapbox here for a bit and pass it over to you, Alicia, and I'd love to hear from you about habits and integration. Yeah, it's such a it's such a wide range of a topic that we could easily get into. But the most important thing that we have to understand is that our psyche and our brain body, you know, spirit is always moving us toward equilibrium and it's always moving us toward change. And one thing that I love is that we can always make a different choice, right? Always. When I think about, you know, the example that we said a couple episodes ago with the chocolate Instead of going to the freezer to have a piece of chocolate every single time my child got out of bed, because that certainly was not in line with my fitness goals and my health goals, I wrote down the emotion on a piece of paper. You know, I changed the habit. I changed the direction. And then after a while, when he was asleep, I wrote everything that I was feeling. And then I decided, do I still want the chocolate? And 90% of the time, the answer was no. You know, and an insert chocolate with most people in my practice is like, I'm going to have a glass of wine to de-stress, right? That's going to be the thing that's going to change my energetic state. But as we know, it causes a bunch of other health problems and other things that we don't necessarily want to feel. So at night, what I encourage you to do is drop into the breath that we were talking about, right? Breathe in through the nose, long exhale out of the mouth. If you feel like you need to reset your nervous system, Go back into that really deep belly breathing and get that activation and then rehearse your day, right? This is an amazing habit where we can actually go into and we can rehearse with our mind what parts of us came up, the reactions we had, what maybe we're not that proud of or what we want to change. But what we don't do is we don't shame ourselves. We don't judge ourselves. We get curious about it. And then we rehearse in our brain how we want to respond, how we want to feel, and how we want to behave, right? That rehearsal process at the end of the night when you're going into that theta that Sam talked about is really incredibly important to changing that automatic habit that we don't want to get into. And we have the power to do that just by the way, just by what we're choosing to shift and we're choosing to change in our routine and with how we're operating every day, right? If there's something that we're not proud of or there's something that we don't want to feel or we don't want to face, if you rehearse it in the brain and you actually insert the new behavior and you insert the new uh, feeling, you actually create a new neural pathway for that to become the new norm. Boom, I love it. Yeah, and at the end of the day, what we're talking about here is integrity with yourself. You know, like, it, do you actually want to make change or or not? Like, because we need to hold ourselves accountable. And sometimes it's helpful if you have an accountability partner as well. Um, I know for me, I'm someone who kind of likes the lone wolf vibe sometimes, you know, because I can move so fast. So it makes it easier for me. But I understand uh, other people like to be in groups or just have a couple friends, you know, but find a way to make these changes to both of our points. And other than that, I would invite you guys just to, for your final homework assignment, to choose one thing and do a five-day challenge. You know, uh, there's something called 75 Hard. It's gone viral. A lot of people are very familiar with it. I actually think it's uh, not the best for us. I think it's a, it's a great way to just lean into that yang or masculine energy more and disconnect from your feelings. And it's a little bit too robotic for me. But I understand why it works for a lot of people. I'm definitely not bashing it. I just think it's very different than the five-day challenge. A five-day challenge is literally like baby-stepping your way to create new habits and behaviors that can last long-term. So something that you might want to consider is putting it on your calendar for 15 minutes every day for the next five minutes to practice the cyclic sigh. The cyclic sigh is again, as a reminder, an inhale all the way up through the nose, sipping in a bit more at the top, exhaling through the mouth. If you do this, I would recommend to practice it with a timer for about five minutes, inhaling all the way up through the nose, sipping in a bit more through the nose, exhale through the mouth, keep going just like that for five minutes. 
the reason why I say to give yourself uh, 15 minutes on your calendar is to allow yourself to have this space on the before you start and after you finish so you're not just jumping from one thing to another. Because what gets us in this fight or flight mode, especially at being busy professionals and feeling overwhelmed and the nature of our deadlines and tasks within the promotional products industry and all industries really is jumping from thing to thing on an unconscious level, not aware how we actually feel. So at the end of the day, everything about these six steps is just about slowing down. So that is the six step breath process. If you want to learn more about it, you can go to my website, samkabert.com. My book is there, Overcome the Overwhelm. At my website, you'll see different ways to work with me, which are a lot of ways speaking. I do a lot of speaking, whether it's for small teams or keynotes, any things like that. I also have something called the Breath Club. So if you want to offer something to your employees to not just like check the box on mental health, but to actually invoke real change and offer them a benefit, check out the Breath Club or reach out to me. Alicia's website is Alicia K coaching.com. That's K-A-Y. And Alicia, again, is a breathwork practitioner. She's a facilitator just like myself. And she's also a certified coach and licensed trauma therapist. So if you want to go deeper on your own psyche, definitely, I highly recommend uh, reaching out to Alicia. And the last thing is we talked about breathwork journeys earlier in these episodes. I want you guys to know that people are actually using breathwork as an offering for conferences these days. I went to a conference last year with uh, for SHRM, which is the HR association, and they had someone facilitating breathwork to, for the HR professionals there to literally like do these deep trauma response type breathwork journeys that we were talking about earlier. Additionally, about a year ago, I did a breathwork journey for about 100 salespeople with five other women where it was like, you know, macho meathead type dudes that at the end of it all had puddles in their eyes of tears. And it, now they bring in breath, breathwork practitioners all the time for their events. So if you're interested in breathwork journeys, definitely reach out to me and we can figure something out, Alicia and I together or whatever would make sense. And just want to thank you guys again for checking out this series. And remember, it is also simple at the end of the day. As humans, we just tend to overcomplicate. Alicia, go and toss it over to you for any final words you might have. Yeah, I just, what's on my heart is just know that stress, being stressed out is not your natural state. It is a signal of overwhelm and it is something that your body, your psyche, your soul does not want you to carry. And there are ways to really mitigate that and to get back into alignment with how you want to feel. And the answers really are within you if you just choose to do that inner work and tune into your breath because the world needs you in a state where you're actually response able and that you're actually becoming present with the conversations you have and you're not always in your head and you're not always like rushing and you're not always stressed. So the best service that you can do for yourself, your family, your workplace, the people that you love is to really do that inner work to clear out your nervous system from all the stress you're carrying because it's how we are supposed to be operating in the world. Could not agree more. Thank you, Alicia. Let's go ahead and take one breath in and exhale all the BS. Let it out. Remember, it doesn't have to be dense. It doesn't have to be hard. Let's have some fun with it. Go crush it, guys. I hope to hear from you and thank you for checking out this little mini six-week series. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening to this pod to the very end. I hope you got a ton out of it. Thank you to my co-host, Alicia K for sharing your wisdom. Thank you to Lori Moore and the whole team over at Promo Corner for hosting this series, which is now being repurposed onto the Soul Seeker podcast. And thank you to you. They, I hope you find some compassion and gratitude for yourself for showing up for yourself to listening to all six of these episodes and for doing the work and for caring about mental health and for doing your part of raising the collective consciousness from this fallen state of humanity. If you want the book and you don't have the book, it's called Overcome the Overwhelm. You can find it in the description with this video for an affordable cost. 
If you want to get to know me better, reach out to me via email. My email is sam at samkabert.com. You can find my email in the show notes. My website is samkabert.com. I do a variety of coaching and consultant work, and I speak to corporations and businesses about mental health in the workplace, overcoming overwhelm, the practice of soul life balance. I also offer breathwork journeys and different breathwork experiences in addition to my monthly breath club. So if you want to get in touch with me or learn more about my offerings, just hit me up. Other than that, thank you so much. And I'll see you back to our original programming on the Soul Seeker podcast.